Welcome back to Urban Traditionalists. We have been a little quiet on the content producing as it is the middle of winter, January 2nd to be quite exact. And there's just not a lot going on on the farm. Um, one thing that is going on is our chickens have started finally producing eggs although they immediately started slowing down once they were producing just because it's winter. And we actually weren't sure why chickens slow down their egg production in the winter. And after a bit of research, we found out it has to do with light, that their light exposure obviously becomes a little more minimal with daylight becoming less and less. So a trick we found out about that is if we turn on their coop lights, because we actually have rope lighting in their coop, if we turn on their rope lighting, to come on when it gets dark either in the evening or a little more in the morning and expand their exposure to just physical light then their egg production goes back up so that was something we learned but outside of our chickens producing eggs there's really not a lot going on obviously the garden is completely dormant right now and all the food preserving is essentially done the one food that i do have remaining is squash so a lot of people grow squash but then they don't actually know what to do with it um, or they, they don't actually even buy it from the store because they don't know what to do with it. So I'm going to show you something you can do with squash and I only just did this yesterday as a test run and it worked out really, really well. So I'm actually going to do it on a much larger scale today. So this is a kombucha, kombucha squash, I believe. Uh, either that or it's called a blue pumpkin. I'm not actually sure. A lot of our squash ended up being hybrids because we planted them too close together. Um, but I cooked about five of these yesterday and um, just chopped them up, didn't take the skin off, just chopped them up, uh, took all the seeds out and everything, put them on a cookie sheet with some olive oil and salt. My dog is eating breakfast, if you can hear that crunching that. This is when he chose to eat it finally, was when I am filming, of course. So I just put it on a cookie sheet, olive oil and salt, and baked it at 375 until it was, I could get a fork all the way through it. And then I pureed it. So this is the puree I have left from yesterday. So obviously you can see that this pumpkin is super, super bright, really orange, and it has the consistency of a butternut squash. And the recipe I'm using today actually called for butternut squash, but this is the squash I have on hand, so this is what we'll be using. And I have so many more of these, so I'm happy to find a good reason to use them. Um, another thing too is I often pressure can squash. This is from two years ago. So I do pressure can squash, and then people ask me, well, what do you do with it once it's pressure canned? And you can make it into soup or side dishes or anything, but this is actually also a great use for it. So without further ado, this is what we're making today. This is leftover from last night. We are making squash gnocchi. It actually looks way more like a super bright craft dinner, but it's not. It is squash pasta. So we're making gnocchi made with puree and flour, salt, eggs, and then a little bit of spices. This was made with our home eggs, but I've run out of them now, so I did buy store-bought eggs for this, but we're gonna be making um, the gnocchi. Now, there is a bit, quite a bit of a step process to this, so I'm just gonna run over that really, really quickly, and then we'll go over the actual making process. So, once we actually make the dough, you do wanna chill it in the fridge for about four hours, or the freezer for about two hours. And then you pull your dough out, you roll it into your gnocchi, and then you re-chill it in the fridge for an hour or the freezer for a half hour, which is I did the freezer version because I was running out of time yesterday. And then you, you cook it. So, but what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be making all the gnocchi and then freezing it uh, until it's frozen, and then I'm gonna be vacuum sealing it to stick in our freezer for more long-term storage. So uh, we still have fresh to eat for dinner tonight, and then I'll be making this more for long-term. So that's the process. I'm gonna link the recipe below if you want the actual recipe for this. Um, but our basic ingredients are gonna be the squash puree, the flour, eggs, salt, a little bit of cinnamon, and a little bit of nutmeg for seasoning. So let's get that mixed up. Okay, after reconsulting my recipe, I actually got a couple things incorrect there. So there's no cinnamon, there's just nutmeg. And then there's also Parmesan cheese. You can use fresh grated. I'm just gonna use this because we actually have a lot of it on hand and I'd like to use it up before um, it goes bad. I know that takes a really long time, but still we're gonna use that up. And then we've got our salt, our flour, 
and our puree. Um, the When I made this yesterday, I made it four times over. And I actually think I'm going to do something similar right now. And I was a loose measure yesterday too. So we'll do four cups puree to start with here. Actually, we're going to do it six. Okay. So that means we're also six eggs. I may even do more than that just to finish up the batch, but we'll stick with that. So if we're doing this six times, we're actually three teaspoons salt. And we're one and a half teaspoons nutmeg. I sometimes find people overestimate nutmeg, so I'm not gonna quite do that much. We'll cut it back a little bit. It's three quarters of a cup Parmesan. Again, we're gonna make that a bit loose. I found it to have a little too much Parmesan when I made it yesterday. This is a cup and a half. I do like to strain everything because we're making something pretty refined here. So you really want to get rid of all those lumps. So it's one and a quarter cup flour per. Uh, so if we're doing that six times, that's six, seven and a half cups. If I am doing my immediate math right here. This is the fun part here. We're going to mix it all up. Get it all in there. Okay, that's all mixed, but as you can see, it is still quite wet. Now, if your puree has a little too much water in it, um, then your ratio is going to be off. Now, the recipe does say that if your dough is still wet, to keep adding flour, because we do want to be able to roll this or get it into a cohesive ball to refrigerate. So I am going to be adding more flour. You can add a smaller amount and then evaluate as you go. We'll start with that. My sense is I'll need a little bit more. Okay, that's about the consistency you want it. What we're gonna be doing now is taking portions of the dough and kneading it further on the counter with a little bit of flour. And then what we'll be doing is we'll be freezing or refrigerating these dough portions. So you kinda of wanna roll it into, I usually do a bit of a cylinder And then we'll wrap that in saran wrap and do that to all this dough and then stick it in the fridge or freezer to chill. Wrapped up just like that. Continue the process till all your dough is done. Okay, we're back with a chilled roll of dough here. And as you can see, it's firmed up quite nicely. So that's what you're waiting for, is for that to firm up. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna roll this out. But as far as I'm gonna take it, so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take your knife and you're just gonna cut off little, they call them pillows. They look like little pillows in the end. Now you don't need an authentic like gnocchi board to roll these. You can take a fork 
What you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your pillow and roll it along the fork, just like that. Take your fork, your little pillow of pastry, and you're gonna roll it along the fork. And that creates your little gnocchi pillow. And then just set them off to the side. You can see that one's a bit thick. That's why you kind of want to be as uniform as possible. There you go. That's your squash gnocchi right there. Now the second chill comes in. So what you want to do is lay them on uh, something, you can do this or something with parchment on it and you want to chill them in the fridge for an hour or in the freezer for a half hour. These are from yesterday. So I actually left these in the freezer overnight. You can see they're frozen together. And I am now going to vacuum seal these so that they're ready when we want to eat them again. Um, if I were to cook these right away, you just want to bring a pot to boiling water. Um, not from frozen, these would have to be thawed out. But if these were to be chilled for the hour or half hour, then you just bring a pot of boiling water or water to boil and then you cook them until they float. It's about four to seven minutes. And then once they float, they're done. Uh, but we're gonna vacuum seal these up and uh, repeat the process here with all of our puree. You wanna lick the spatula? Hmm? This is like licking the cookie spatula, but dog version. There you have it, ready for the freezer.